where I would like to like to go today. You'll have to forgive me because I'm dealing with this natural man. But I feel good in my spirit. And we neither sun nor star, no, when neither sun nor stars in uh, many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. I feel like somebody's soul is there today. This ship that Paul was on heading to a judgment seat, if you'll remember. He's getting ready to go and see Caesar and try to answer for himself. And when he was in the midst of this storm that was on the ocean, he was a captive in the midst of this. you got to remember, he was not free. And sometimes our storms that we are facing and the direction that we have to go, we feel like we're captive, even though we've done nothing wrong and we never, we're not out trying to cause trouble and live like the devil. All we're trying to do is to live a godly life, and that's all Paul was doing, was trying to live a godly life. But your godly life will bring you in opposition of everything and everyone around about you. You'll get trouble from every side because they don't like the spirit of the Holy One of Heaven that's in you. And so it'll seem like that there's nothing but trouble in your way. But I want to speak to your heart today. I want to convince you today that this is not an accident. That this is not something that God doesn't know about. All the time that Paul was in this captive ship, all the time that he was there in the midst of the turmoil of the sea, the waves crashing and he couldn't see any signs of light anyway. Day and night there was no sun, no stars. There was nothing that he could see that would make him feel like he had hope at all. They had been fasting. Sometimes we fast and we don't feel like we get any closer. In fact, we feel like we're further away from God when we fast. We're putting that old flesh down and flesh doesn't like it. But I'm telling you today, it'll still work. He said here that all hope that we should be saved was taken away. But after a long absence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them. I'm standing in the midst of y'all today. And said, sirs and ma'ams, I'll put that in there. Ye should have hearkened to me, and should I not have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and lost. Sometimes we hear what the man of God is trying to say, and yet we keep going on on our own way and our own will. I, I'm telling you, I didn't know that this would be connected in with this morning. I, I had no idea, I'm being honest with you, I had no idea what the lesson was this morning before I came to the house of the Lord. But here we find this man, and he's standing there in the midst of a bunch of people, and he said, I tried to tell you this is a good time to go. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss to any man's life among you. I want you to understand today I'm trying to tell the church that's in this house. And those that claim to be a part, if they'll come to be a part. I want you to understand there won't be no loss in your life. If you'll just stay right here. Oh, the message that I have today to give you is to stay in the ship. And I know there's so much more I want to cover up before I leave. But sometimes we get in a hurry and we don't like what it looks like from inside the ship. We think maybe there's better sailing on somebody else's boat. But I'm telling you, God is trying to work something in you. God is trying to fix something in your soul. That no matter what storm in your life comes, no matter what raging sea is in 
front of you. If you'll just hang on and stay with God, you can't go nowhere else and get what you need than right here. You don't have to believe it, I know it. The Lord had already spoken through his angel and told him, don't worry about it. The angel of the church hears me. The Lord has spoken to me about this concerning y'all. If you'll just stay in the ship, look at the trouble from out there. Come on, the trouble is not going to do nothing but a few waves might lap over while you're in the ship. That's all right. Let the waves hit you. You know you're not going down. God has got you in the hollow of his hand. Under the shadow of his wing, he's got you today. You just got to stay close. He said that no man would be lost. I want to jump to 22. He said, and now I exhort you to be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. I want to cover this here in just a little bit. For there stood by me in, in this night an angel of God, whose I am. Come on, somebody say, whose I am. Come on, you belong to the Lord. I belong to God. And whom I serve. Say, fear not, Paul, for thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. I want you to understand if you'll just hang with me for a little while, God going to bring us out. I don't know what trouble you're facing, but I believe in my soul today. If you'll just hang on with me for a while longer, we're going to get out of this thing and it won't be through death. It may be through the rapture, but God is not going to let us lose if you'll stay close to the voice of the living God. A lot of times we don't know the voice. We listen to other people. They sound good. But the way these people sounded, they were throwing things off the boat. They were saying, let's just make a mutiny and get off. Let's go and jump off the side. We've already got rid of all of the things, the payload we're throwing it out. And the only way we're going to be saved is if we give up and jump into the sea. That is about as crazy as anything I've ever heard. What makes you think that you're in a place where you do have safety right now? Why would you jump into a raging sea where you have no help? But people do it. They jump off, go where they want to go and do what they want to do. And you hear them out in the raging sea drowning, crying out for somebody to save them. But if they just would have listened to the angel and stayed in the ship. Now you want to give me, I hear it already, I, I hear it even though it hasn't been said. Well, uh, pastor, what you are uh, telling us is stay in the ship, but, but we know enough Bible that the ship eventually was broken up. But let me tell you what the Lord told me to tell you about that. They, I understand what's coming and I understand what's happening. He said, uh, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. How be it? We must be cast upon a certain island. See, we don't understand a lot about how God does things. But I'm telling you, if they had left before it was time to leave, they would have been lost forever. Sometimes the timing is not right. You want to go, but God don't want you out yet. Yes, the ship can take you to a place where God wants you. And when it's time to go, then you'll get the instructions to go out. Well, it's been quiet in here. It must be hit something. The certain island, if you'll read and study, there were souls there that needed help. The king, if you will, the leader, the ruler of that land was sick, near death. And I don't know what God had to do with that man, but it was enough to draw his attention and to cause a shipwreck right in front of the island. 
when they got off and it was time to go, some of them still used the ship. It wasn't the whole ship, but they grabbed a piece of the ship to take with them. See, that piece of the ship was what held them through the storm to get to the place where God's going. Some of y'all may be going someplace, but you got to hold on to the part of the ship that will float you to the place where God wants you. The other ones were just wanting to abandon it. Just want to jump off in the ocean without anything. It's time to kill everybody and go. That's what they wanted to do. But God said, no, 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 no. I've got people in this ship that I want saved. And you ain't going to kill them. God began to deal with the man that was watching over him. He said, no, don't do yourselves hard. Don't, don't take nobody's lives. God's got a plan in this. God's got a plan in this ship today. He wants to take us to another place. He's wanting to take us to a certain island. You read through the Bible, there's many times he talks about a certain place or a certain man. It's not just any place. It's a pre-decided place. It's pre-positioned. It's a place that he wants you to go and what you are supposed to do when you get there. But when you run out too early, you miss everything that God's got planned. And so you sometimes are impatient and you want to just run. But if you ran like they did, you'd be drowned. They made it to a place where the ship could set. And it was close enough to the shore that when God was tired of them being in the ship, he allowed the ship to break up because they were in a place where two seas meet. And he broke it up close enough to where they could get to the shore. And then people had treated them wonderfully. He's like, well, that's great and it's all glorious now. But you got to remember that wasn't the end of it. Paul had to go. They were cold and trying to find a place to dry out from the treachery of the sea. Sometimes you got to find a place to dry out from all of the trouble you've just been through. And you got to get next to a fire. Oh, so I wish you were walking with me. He gathered up, did what he could to help build the fire. Come on, some of y'all need to help build the fire. It shouldn't be left up to me to build the fire. It shouldn't be left up to the assistant pastor to build the fire. Everybody gathered sticks together to make the fire to where it could help everybody. That was coming out of the raging sea. You think, well, that's a great thing that everybody was there. And it, it was just perfect after that. No, honey. Read your Bible. In just working, just working, just doing what he was told by God to do, he reaches down with a viper bites him. Doesn't seem pleasant. Doesn't seem like a good thing. But God used that very thing to show other people that this isn't just an ordinary man. God will take you through some things. He'll allow the enemy to bite you and to cause it look like death is on your life. But I'm here to tell you, you can't die with God's hand on you. All you can do is raise up and just keep walking. And your trauma, your trauma and your trials and your tragedies are the very thing that then people so they just look down and say, man, there's got to be something else. This must be a God. He said, no, 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 back up now. But I do know the God that heals. Why? If Paul had to been there, if he had to suffer the viper, if they had not have seen that he was able to withstand death, they would have no hope for the leader of the city. Somebody said, hey, this man has died. 
should have died, I should say. And he's healthy. And nothing is bothering him. We need to get this man over to our leader who's sick. There's some sick leaders here in your life. Whether they're rulers or just leaders of their homes, there's some people you need to get hold of. Paul went there and laid hands on him and healed. Why? Because they see that it could happen with him. So what you're going through is not about destroying you. But you got to stay in the ship. You jump out too soon, you'll lose your life. Doesn't mean you're going to stay in the ship forever. There are people that have works that they need to do. They have ministries. They have callings that they need to fulfill. But you got to stay in the ship until it's time to get to the place where God wants you off. But there's too many people trying to get off quick. They have all kinds of reasons why they can't come to the house. They have all kinds of reasons why they can't stay in the ship. But I'm telling you, that's the only thing is staying in the ship until God points you to the right place. Paul said in 30, and as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boat into the sea, under color, as though they would have cast anchors out of the fourth ship, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except ye abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. The next verse is impactful. The next verse is impactful, even though it doesn't seem to be it's just another line in the story. But if you read that next verse, there was obedience. Then the soldiers cut the ropes of the boat. What are you talking about? The lifeboat. See, it's... Help me hold the ghost. Sometimes it seems like the ship going out will be great for you. It seems like that's your lifeboat and everything will be good once you get on it. But I promise you, if you get out on that boat without God sending you, you'll be in the midst of the cells. If the ship itself couldn't stand the wave, what could a little lifeboat do? But they listened to the voice. The soldiers cut out the ropes of the boat and let her fall off. You need to let them, the lifeboats you think you've got fall off. The people that you trust in, the people that you got confidence in, they're trying to sway you to do something different than staying in the ship. You better cut the ropes. You gotta cut the ropes. Let their life ship just fall somewhere else. Somebody else can try it, but don't you? Stay with the Lord. Stay with the voice of the Lord. Stay with the man of God. So that you can be directed to safety. 276 people on board. 276 people on board. And not one of them died. Not one of them died. The only injury we know of is Paul being bitten by a spin. And that had nothing to do with the shipwreck. Church, if you just stay in the ship, if you just trust the Lord, don't try to take a lifeboat out. Don't try to take it easy way. This looks safe. It's a boat. It'll make it to the shore. If it ain't God's timing, you'll never make it. You'll never make it. There are some things that happened in this service today. People were asking God for things and pleading with God. Do you really trust Him? If I was to do it, and I'm not going to, but if I was to do it, if I was to ask you what you are pleading about, and you said, this is what I was pleading the Lord for. Whether it's strength, health, finance, I don't. If I was to ask you what it was, and you could articulate what you think you need, my only question is, do you believe he'll do it? Do you have faith that he'll do it? He heard your cry. He heard your plea. But do you believe it? Do you believe in him? Really? You know you say you want to, but do you believe? Saying I know he can is not believing. 
Saying I know he's got power to do it is not believing. Whatever you ask the Lord for when you're at the altars and in your places of prayer, my only question is do you believe that he'll do it? Because if you will believe, he'll perform it. I don't care what it looks like. In spite of all the negativity, in spite of all the noise around, all the trying to fear, do you really believe God? Are you his child? That's the first thing. Do you understand that you're his child? He called you specifically. Out of all the people that you he called you. He said, I want you to be filled with my spirit. I want you to be my child. And I want to be your God. If you can believe it today, what you ask, you shall have. That's what the book said. What you shall have, whatever you ask, you shall have it. If you believe. The problem with one man, well, more than one man. I always keep thinking, and recently been thinking a lot about how God, not just a word, but how the creator of the universe that loved us enough to come down and get in flesh, walk among us, come to a city, and the Bible says he could do no great damage. What, what tied God's hands was that I believe. If you can believe, you can receive it. But do you believe today? We just have a thing. I appreciate this service today. I'm not looking for the same old, same old. I'm not looking just to spend time and say we had church. I want to move with God like we've experienced today. I want to move with God where everyone is touched. And the power of God is made resident in your mind, heart, and soul. And it's in these kinds of times that we need to build that fire. Don't wait for me or wait for the assistant pastor. This church has to start building the fire in prayer. That's where it needs to be. We need to put it in all the resources of our soul that will cause a fire. All the Holy Ghost that we can muster up will cause a fire to war. And what happens when fire begins to rage and there's people on the outside cold and indifferent? They'll be drawn by the light. Drawn by the warmth of the fire. And before long, they'll be consumed by it. Now, I am not talking about sacrifice, folks. I'm talking about the fire of the Holy Ghost that was in the upper room will consume them. It sat upon each of them and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. As the Spirit of God gave them utterance and spoke in other tongues. I'm so grateful today to be in this church for this moment right now. I appreciate being in this moment right now. I want to thank God. Would you just thank God for the moment you're in? right now. The presence that you know you can feel. If you can't feel it, praise the Lord. I know that there's a presence of the Holy Ghost that's in this place. Lord, I thank you for what I feel with the Holy Ghost. I thank you for your presence, Lord, that's been in this service. God, we ask that you would strengthen and guide and lead us. Lord, we'll follow you to the ends of the earth, Lord. Lord, allow us to understand your direction and to follow in love, you know. We'll give you praise and glory and honor for all that you do. Because the praise already belongs only to you. Everybody said in Jesus' name. Goodness, Mr. Defense of all.